You know, many of the people that are in positions of power and enormous wealth, kings and queens and the main hands wearing these gloves that, you know, people get taken by, the politicians, I call them the gloves. But let's talk about, you know, like individuals, powerful presidents, this and that, people who say Trump, people who say Obama, people who say, in this case, Erdogan, Turkey's president, and Aliyev, Azerbaijan's president, George Soros, that's the guy who makes keys in a sense. If you think about presidents as keys, he's a key maker. <laughs> People don't even believe that. And economies are built and destroyed by individuals like that, behind the scenes, of course. Henry Kissinger, powerful, a person who was wanted in over 100 countries, I think, for his... Um, responsibility in the massacre of millions of people, Cambodia, etc. Bill Gates, uh, Jeff Bezos, all these, you know, in these cases, they're, they're, they're wealthy, incredibly wealthy. People who basically get away with things in this life, they have done some amazingly good work in the past. One can just imagine the good work they have done, the merits that they have accrued. People only look at individuals like, you know, co uh, commit genocide and massacres like Erdogan and Aliyev, while the whole world watches, for example. These people who can easily be seen for their acts, crimes against humanity, as evil as this and that, which obviously is true. No ifs and buts about that. But, I want to shed, like, it's just look at the other aspect as to how they ended up in these positions. Apparently not many people talk about that. Including themselves, because they look around and they're like, do something horrible steal or drop a, a country's currency and create major chaos like Soros did some years ago in Russia because of what he wrote I think to the to the head of uh, you know London Stock Exchange something like that but basically he said something that he, he doesn't think that it is a viable asset to have the Russian rubles and things I think that was what that was the case and the whole economy of Russia just collapses, basically, just by that letter. Imagine the power <laughs> that a person, he himself, he would sit there as like sipping coffee. He's like, honey, I don't believe, I, you cannot believe what I just did. And I got away with it. No one can touch me. I am untouchable. A person like Henry Kissinger is an untouchable person. No one will touch him. No one can touch him. Well, not because of the forces that protect him now, but just the great work that he has done in his past to allow him to be in this position of power, of untouchability. And he can continue on living a life, a long, long life. Many people, many presidents came and went, and he's still alive. Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, these are individuals who have enormous wealth, like from this coronavirus situation. They've made, they've probably doubled their wealth. Meanwhile, people are going hungry. They cannot afford a loaf of bread, let alone their rent. So obviously, a person who believes in you know, just God or, you know, there has to be this fairness in the world. So they look at it from, I think, from a very simplistic, naive position of, well, there has to be a balance. Well, there is a balance. And the balance is this individual has done some truly generous acts in their past life, which has now come to greet them. 
There's no one giving Henry Kissinger that power, in a sense. There's nothing special about him, about Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, all these people, Donald Trump, all these people, who have a say in the health, well-being of, of entire countries, populations. That's enormous. Stalin, he ruled for so many years. He was responsible for the deaths of at least 25 million people, most of whom were his own people, were actually Russian and other. He was Georgian, I believe. Still, one would think, like, how can a, a villain like that live for so many years? A Hitler or Mao Zedong, he was responsible for over double that much, that, that amount, meaning over 50 million Chinese died in, at his hands. 50 million people. Wow. How can a person have that much clout? How can a person have that much power? Well, in Buddhism, we have an understanding that if a person does a generous act, if they go ahead and help out let's say refugees or individuals, true refugees, uh, people who have been persecuted and gives them shelter, uh, protects groups of people or makes a heartfelt donation or offering to a saint or a very good person, that will truly be returned. And depending on the person who received it, depending on the mindset of the giver and the receiver, the gift becomes manifold, millions of times. And sometimes though, it doesn't happen in the same life. Many times it doesn't happen in the same life. So. To narrow things down, these individuals are just eating yesterday's meal. The benefits of yesterday's work. And as a Buddhist, as a teacher in, in, of Dhamma, I would simply ask this question, which is not my question, but you get this from the lives of earlier students of the Buddha and the Buddha himself. What is the person doing now with the power that they have now? What is a Henry Kissinger doing? What is a George Soros? What is a Jeff Bezos? What is a Bill Gates doing in the world today? What is a Donald Trump doing in the world today? What is an Obama doing in the world today? What is uh, the Queen of England doing in the world today? Or your own company CEO, for example, who is making more money than God with extremely, you know, you know, checks with many zeros, many digits, while people are being laid off, the way they like to call it, downsized. People are going hungry, losing their homes, landing on the, on the streets with their children and families. Schools are closing. Educational systems, in, in, at least in the U.S., are collapsing, and Europe is following suit. While the rich are getting richer, wealthier are getting wealthier, the politicians with power are trying to grab even more. Erdogan wants to now become the new sultan, the new you know, Ottoman Empire version 2.0, killing Armenians and Artsakh in Armenia, and while the world watches. Putin is over there counting his laurels and just like, you know, this is my domain, this is my... Well, unfortunately, you're all going to die sooner or later. What have you done with your life? That's what I'm concerned about. I'm really concerned about these individuals. I'm worried about them because they're still alive and they're still continuing on their, their course of taking more, stripping people of their lives, of their last breath, causing bloodshed, amassing more wealth,
completely oblivious of the fact that all things must change and they will die with empty hands. I once read somewhere that Alexander, the you know, they call him Alexander the Great, I don't, but before he died, his empire stretched from Macedonia all the way to India. You can imagine the vastness of his empire. But he caught some type of a disease or whatever, and he was about to die, and he called in his three generals, who ended up uh, getting, he divided the empire to between these three, I believe. But before he did so, he said, I have a request as your ruler, as your king, as your emperor. And they said, yes, my lord, you, you tell us and we'll obey. He says, when I die, make sure that you, when you put my casket, my body into carriage, to be taken back wherever it was going to be buried or whatever, that you also cut off my hands, my wrists, basically, and then hang my hands from the back of the carriage, behind, following suit, basically, behind the carriage that is holding my body, dead body. And they said, why would you ask us to do such a horrible thing, to cut off our lords, our kings, our emperors' hands. And what will history books tell us about, about this? That these generals cut off their own leaders' hands. Like He says, not to worry. There's a meaning behind this. Because after all this wealth, all these territories, these millions of people that are now calling me their king, their ruler, their god king, need to know, and history also needs to know, that with all of this, I am going empty-handed. Hence, my hands being completely open, dangling, dangling from the end of a carriage. Every single one of these people that I just mentioned, from Erdogan to Aliyev to all these people, Trump, Putin, Obama, Kissinger, George Soros, and everyone else behind those guys. The real powerful, you whom you will never know. We will never know who they are. <laughs> That's how powerful they are. Every single one of these is going to be dead. Unable to even carry their name with them, let alone a single gold coin that they stole from the mouth of a child, from their bread, that they've tortured, they've been responsible for the deaths. I've been living on this planet for a little over 50 years and I've seen wars. I have been a victim of wars as a result of such characters dominating the planet and creating wars so that they can sell weapons and they can become wealthier, have a bigger dominion over multitudes of millions of people. And now it's the same thing with data, with information, with the media. They dominate the world through cognitive means, through media, through intellectualism, intellectual um, realms. Not just the money, not just the bank, not just the politics. Imagine the power, but none of them, it seems, none of them is pausing for a millisecond and asking, how come I have so much power? And can I truly turn this around and do something so that I can gain merits wherever I'm going to land in my next life? So that they can become a Jeff Bezos in the next life. But Jeff Bezos is never going to be another Jeff Bezos in another life. Even getting a tiny little morsel of food will be quite an ordeal for him. So long as he is not sharing that wealth, giving back, instead of nitpicking or nickeling and diming his, his, his workers, who have about half an hour, I think, of, of lunchtime or something, and 
Many of them work in warehouses where to go from one point where they're working at the site to the staff room, for example, where they need to eat, it takes about 15 minutes just to walk or to be in a tiny little golf cart type of a thing to take them to the other end of the warehouse to eat, to take a breath. And then another 15 minutes to come back. Well, the whole lunch period was 30 minutes. How is this human being going to live? Well, that's what we're talking about. Greed. And greed for more. They keep this up and they're going to be born in hellish realms as hungry ghosts with bellies and stomachs as big as a hill, as a mountain, but with a mouth that is as small as a pinhead, tiny little pinhead that nothing can go through, not even rarely a droplet of water can slide through. They're going to be, greed brings that kind of a birth. Not another birth as Jeff Bezos. That's never going to be possible. Unless he turns around their life around and start doing the things that ended up being the reasons for him to land in a life where starting in his garage and all of a sudden he became such a wealthy person. Well, a lot of people start businesses in their garages and they will never come out of their garages. And there is no such a thing as luck or someone up there saying, you know what, I'm going to favor you and not that person. Well, no, no, there's no such person either. It's our work. The Buddha said, your only inheritance is your kamma, your actions, what you do. And based off of those, you will gain the merits, good or bad. These people now are here on this planet at this time period, during this time period, many of whom have just been abusing and milking and milking and eking out every single thing out of this world to gain more, to outdo one another. But none of them is pausing to consider doing good, not just to their people, but just to do good. Turn their lives around because not for any other reason other than just look at it economically or, you know, in, the, in that sense, like gains versus losses. They will lose. A Henry Kissinger, no matter how powerful he is, and he's an extremely powerful person, of course, will not be Kissinger. He will have to pay for all the stuff that he's done. That's heartbreaking for me. Just to imagine that, the amount of pain. I was showing you the picture of yesterday of, of Lenin and, and, and Stalin, a drawing that was on social media. I said, they're still doing time in hell. They've died, I think, about 60 years ago, or the other one died even earlier, Lenin. They're still paying for their crimes. Not just what, the, what they've done while they were alive, this mess that's going on right now in Artsakh, in nagorno karabakh that is the responsibility of these Soviet people, leaders, whose actions then is now causing the deaths of many innocent lives. So even though you're not here, you're still going to be paying for it because it was your actions they were your actions that perpetuated this situation, brought this thing about. So while we're alive, we need to be extremely careful how we are living our life. And not to sit down and count our gold coins and add more and think that that's the object of life. That's not. The object of life is making sure that at least in your next life you'll be able to do that. That you won't have diseases. Every time the Azerbaijanis drop a phosphorus bomb on civilians or types of weapons are released on civilians that were never designed 
for anything other than uh, a battlefront between two armies. They're using weaponry like that. Israel keeps sending drones every day. There's planes coming in with weapons. Well, they're going to pay for this. It's so sad for me to realize that. They keep doing this without taking into consideration the amount of suffering they will have to face. So instead of sitting here and counting, oh, look at me, look how, how much money I have in my bank. And it keeps multiplying. I can't believe I'm getting away with this. I'm literally doing this. I'm killing people. I'm killing thousands and millions of people. I'm okay. No one's touching me. Oh, okay. So, Hence, in the old days, the ruler, like Caesar, for example, Julius Caesar, and in Egypt and other places, and in, in, in Sumer and other places, in Mesopotamia, they came to that conclusion that they must be more than just human. Hence, the idea of God King showed up. Because they were getting away with so much, like Alexander, that I mentioned earlier. People are not opening doors for him. He was crashing through countries, civilizations, cultures, destroying them also, and getting away with it. So obviously people said, wow, he's only 30, he's getting away with it. So he must have some God-like quality. So he's a God King. Well, today we have those people. They're called Bill Gates's, Jeff Bezos's, Kissinger's, all these Obamas. Not much has changed in human history. The vanity and the blindness, the ignorance that a person has, instead of pausing and saying, wait a minute, could it be possible for me to use all this, these resources that I have for good? Because I don't know why I'm getting so lucky. Chances are, based on my understanding of history, that I won't be able to continue this indefinitely. I will die. I will croak and die. One day, for sure. So let me turn my life around and do something good for a change. That can really put another a twist to the whole story of your life. And I guarantee it, that sense of safety that will come, that sense of security, when you cause another human being to feel safe, taken care of. Not just your own people, I have to say. Not just your own immediate family or people who look like you or who think like you. But just people that you don't necessarily care about. Just average people, anyone. And to have that total stranger look at you with a smile and say thank you, or not even know that you're the reason why they are happy now, they're healthy now. Their country is at peace now. Instead of you setting up fires here and there. Creating wars so that you can make a few more trillion dollars for you and your bosses. That is something that you can take with you. Otherwise, you're going to take a lot of bad things that you've done. And they're going to be with you, guaranteed, for many, many lifetimes, even if you don't believe in rebirth. I'm sorry. It's there. And the evidence of that is your life, you getting away with so much. So this is a call for these individuals. I'm a nobody. I'm a nobody. But... This is a call because I am really concerned about them and where they're going to end up. And it's not pleasant where they're going to end up. It's far worse hells than the people that they sent others to. So there's, it's my, my encouragement, my invitation is for people to take more responsibility and more care. Take more care of what type of actions they want to commit. And there's this thing called death. Every one of us is guaranteed to go, to die. 
no matter how wealthy, if you're born in Buckingham Palace or you're born in the, in the boondocks, somewhere in the Ozarks, it doesn't matter. What we do while we're here is the point. Because that's what you're going to build your true future with, your next life. So I hope someone, somewhere, pauses and someone like, you know, a wealthy person or, or a powerful person makes a decision that is contrary to the kind of lifestyle that they've been living and leading and truly start to experience happiness for once. Because none of these people have known happiness, by the way. They don't know wholesome happiness. They don't. And it's sad that despite all the wealth, all the power they have to make and destroy or destroy countries, entire countries, that they have not truly felt happy. I want them to be happy. <laughs> But they're never going to be happy, truly, so long as they continue this line, of, you know, this, this line of actions, this type of lifestyle. And all the wealth in the world, all the yachts and all the fancy you know, names that you have on your iPhone, your contact list, means nothing. That doesn't give you happiness. All the caviar in the world will not give you happiness. All the... Fancy champagne, all the none of it. So I hope things, at least for one of them, will change to the better before it's too late for that person. I hope for every one of them. Because every time I see something happening in the world and I see these characters running around and starting new wars and, and new economic crises, dominate, 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 and treat people like consumers, nothing more. It's like, until when? Like, are you that blind not to see that you're also part of it? You're, you're also going to end up dead and your actions are going to carry themselves drag you like a hook from your neck and there's no way you're going to escape that none of your buddies are going to come in to rescue you none of your bodyguards will be there to protect you nobody because you are simply a subject of the universe and its laws you will not escape those laws, no matter how powerful or how much money you think you have. It's never going to buy a single millisecond extra for you to live on this planet. So, I'll stop. <laughs>